Each year, the sea level rises, setting off irreversible chain reactions beyond human control. Ten hottest years ever measured. Climate change is our single greatest security threat. You are failing us. Governments know it. Even the United States military knows it. None of this is rhetoric, and none of it is hysteria. It is fact. House on fire. Welcome to the House on Fire podcast, powered by the Clio Institute. I'm your host, Dania Toledo, coming to you from ground zero of the climate crisis, Miami, Florida. And today we're talking about the business of environmental responsibility. We will highlight some of the innovations that Watsco, the largest distributor of air conditioning, heating, and refrigeration equipment, is championing in the HVAC industry. Today we're speaking with Marisol Gomez Messi. She leads the sustainability programs at Watsco a Fortune 500 company headquartered in Miami, and once again, largest distributor of air conditioning, heating, et cetera. Um, Marisol started and built her career in the green financing and tech startup ecosystems in Miami, and she has also worked in the nonprofit sector. Thank you. So you may be asking yourselves, why is it that we're talking to an HVAC company? Well, Marisol, could you go ahead and tell us what is it that sets Watsco apart from the rest of them? Well, first of all, I would like to talk a little bit about the industry at large, right? Mm -hmm. So what you might not know is about 50% of the energy that's consumed in the home goes to heating and cooling, mm -hmm. right? So the impact that this equipment, when it gets installed, has in the footprint of any business or home is huge. Mm -hmm. um, and what Watsco has strived to do um, is really help contractors and consumers make the right decision around their HVAC equipment, right? Mm -hmm. So we've really developed tools that help contractors sell and install um, high efficiency equipment, heat pumps over gas furnaces, for example. Um, and that has a really outsized um, effect on greenhouse gas emissions overall. Mm -hmm. So I want to take it back to you. You have an inter interesting background in the green financial industry, tech, and in the nonprofit sector. How did you end up leading sustainability programming at the largest distributor of air conditioning equipment? So um, I grew up in Colombia, surrounded by nature and watching David Attenborough documentaries. So I became extremely passionate about environmental sustainability. Um, I studied industrial engineering and worked for the private sector for a while. And then after I got my master's degree in London, I worked for Friends of the Earth, which is an organization that works on lobbying for changes in environmental policy. Amazing. And I led all of their um, supporter engagement initiatives for about a year. Then we moved to Miami. I had my first child. And when we arrived here in 2011, there was not a lot in the environmental space in Miami. But what was a nascent um, industry, I would say, was the tech startup ecosystem was starting mm -hmm. to emerge. So I had the privilege to work at VentureHive, which was the first tech accelerator in Miami, and helping entrepreneurs um, you know, with tools to develop their businesses. Then Pace Financing arrived in, in Florida, which is Property Assessed Clean Energy, and the type of financing, um, the projects that they finance mm -hmm. it, are around resiliency, energy efficiency, and clean energy. So That's that amazing. really drew me into the industry. And I worked there for over three years until a colleague from VentureHive called me and said, look, um, I'm starting to build this new innovation business unit at Watsco called Watsco Ventures, which basically helps the contractors who buy products from any one of our stores build their businesses in an efficient way, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we also, they've also started working on climate tech, right? Mm -hmm. And seeing products that could then be distributed by, by our different business units. Mm -hmm. So I thought this would be extremely interesting. And I moved there and worked for about three years um, until Watsco really started thinking about the impact again that we have. Mm -hmm. um, on the environment. And the first thing that we did was, okay, we've been really building all of these tools, uh, helping contractors, training them, and you know, helping them get access to incentives to sell more high efficiency equipment and mm -hmm. heat pumps. Um, what is the impact? What impact has that really had um, on the overall emissions? Mm -hmm. And when we looked at it, if you look at um, the 
emissions that we've averted from the sale of high efficiency equipment since January 2020 mm -hmm. until December 2023, just by selling high efficiency equipment, it's been about 19.2 um, million metric tons of CO2 that's amazing. averted from going into the atmosphere. Um, and that's the equivalent of about 4.5 million gas powered cars taken off the road. So we said, okay, that's a really good start, right? But what about our own operations? Mm. We have hundreds of, of trucks delivering product. We have, again, over 690 locations. Yes. What can we really do to measure and manage the emissions, um, both in our operations and across the supply chain? Mm -hmm. So I raised my hand and I said, you know, I wanna do this. And that's what I've been doing for the last two years. We've implemented a carbon accounting tool that actually allows us now to measure with a lot of precision mm -hmm. what those emissions are, where those hot spots are, and really start building strategies to reduce them. Awesome. Would you say that since the beginning of that program, you've been able to avert, like, avert a certain number of like carbon emissions? We're currently measuring that, okay. right? We've already started initiatives, which our subsidiaries had been doing because honestly, decarbonization is good for business, if you think Absolutely. about it, right? So there are many things that, mm -hmm. that decarbonization helps with in terms of growth. One of them is it reduces costs, mm -hmm. right? Um, the other part of that is it really um, helps you differentiate yourself with the competition, right? It can really mm -hmm. become a value added in, inside of your strategy. And lastly, employee engagement, right, which are all drivers of growth again. So our companies had already been doing, you know, energy efficiency improvements at their, at their branches. They had ele started electrifying their forklifts. Um, but again, we needed to start like looking at the data. Mm -hmm. Everything starts with data. Absolutely. So what we've started working on, we have a leader at each one of our subsidiaries and we work very closely with them on a monthly basis to look at the energy that's consumed in, throughout their operations. And we choose those hot spots, mm -hmm. do energy audits and start building and making changes to the equipment so we can reduce those emissions. That's awesome. With this new tactic of ensuring that emissions stay low across your supply chain and within your own operations, would you say that this has become sort of a new like mission for um, Watsco as a whole? And if so, like how would you frame that like as a benefit for Watsco as opposed to, like in contrast to all your other competitors? Well, I would say that. Um one of the things we want to do is obviously lead the industry into this cleaner, brighter future. Mm -hmm. um, but it is important to note that the industry is moving in that direction, right? Mm -hmm. So last year, the federal government um, has this new uh, ener energy efficiency minimums that changed. Mm. And then next year, there's another change in refrigerants, right, mm. which will make them cleaner. So throughout the industry, changes are happening. Mm -hmm. But for us, what we think is, how can we influence the industry even more? Mm -hmm. We, Because of our vast size, we really have very strong relationships with equipment manufacturers, right? Mm -hmm. And we work very closely with them on building, you know, a sustainable supply chain, and making sure that the products that they're bringing to market, which are lower lowering emissions, mm -hmm. are actually, we train the contractors to sell them and make sure that consumers get access to them, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I would say if the, the strategy that we've applied, if you think about it, there's mm -hmm. three pillars of that. One is around greenhouse gas emissions reduction. And mm -hmm. if you think about it, what we've focused on is how do we accelerate the sale of high efficiency equipment? And what kind of tools can we bring into the market to help us do that? Mm -hmm. And how do we improve the efficiency of the already installed base? So mm -hmm. for example, how do we sell more smart thermostats? Which if you install a smart thermostat in your home, it has the potential to save about 15% of your energy consumption. Interesting. Yes. Um, then we do the same across our operations, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. The second pillar of that is really around the circular economy, right? Mm -hmm. So the AC systems and heat pumps that we sell, all of them use refrigerants again. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, although this is changing, and next year there's we're going to get um, cleaner refrigerants. Um, one key component of all of this is ensuring that the refrigerant that is installed and when contractors come to service your home, that they dispose of it or recycle it efficiently, mm. right? So we offer that at our locations and we even pay contractors to come and um, reclaim refrigerant with us. Awesome. Then we also are thinking about our own waste in our operations, but also thinking in the future, how do we help contractors dispose responsibly of that end of life equipment? And then the third pillar of all of this is education, right? Mm. We have with about 100,000 contractors, um, you can think that we can influence about 400,000 technicians, right? Mm -hmm. And help them really give them the tools to ensure that they install products correctly and that they keep up with all of these regulatory changes and technology changes as well. So that's a really important part of all of this. All of that stuff is amazing. And the last pillar being education, I feel, is like so like on the nose because everyone needs to know like how to properly move towards a more sustainable future. And considering that, you know, air conditioning isn't going away, our summers are just becoming hotter and hotter. And there is an increased need to build climate controlled indoor spaces, especially in Miami. So what are some of the projects Watsco is working on to ensure the HVAC industry is building an infrastructure that is low carbon and high efficiency? Uh Right. So we we do a lot of training at Watsco. Last year alone, we trained over 20,000 technicians over a period of more than 50,000 hours. Right. Mm. So it's it's a A really big impact that we can have. And one thing that I want to say is um, you normally think about climate jobs as being, you know, part, again, of an organization, being an activist. Like Cleo. <laughs> yes, which is a wonderful organization. We love Cleo around here. I don't know if you guys can tell. <laughs> but, uh, but there are other options, right, into building a green career. Mm-hmm. And you would never think of HVAC as one of those options. But after all I've said mm-hmm. about the impact that that has on the energy consumption in the home. Maybe you've inspired some young people <laughs> out there to go into yeah. the HVAC industry. Maybe Watsko. Yes, or any of our 100,000 contractors Mm -hmm. that are out there, because if you think about it, every time a contractor changes one of those old units, you're reducing emissions. They're the boots on the ground. They are the boots on the ground. So um, there are many ways Mm -hmm. to make it into the green space, and this is definitely one where you will have a really big impact. Amazing. And so now I want to focus a little bit more again on Miami, because, you know, we're based in Miami. Um, And Miami-Dade County was actually designated as a technology hub by the Department of Commerce's Economic Development Administration, so the EDA, in October 2023, a few months ago, we'll say six months ago, roughly. This designation will elevate and accelerate South Florida's advances in climate action and resiliency and unlocks access to tens of millions of dollars in potential funding. Um, So is Wasco plan? Is Watsco playing a role or partnering with Miami-Dade County via this designation or otherwise? Yes, for sure. Um, We are definitely very excited about this this designation. And um, as I said, we've been here since the early 1970s, Mm -hmm. and we deeply care about the future of our region, right? And we see the impacts of climate change Mm -hmm. now. Um, Now more than ever. Now more than ever. And we want to make sure that we play our part. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that the Climate Ready Tech Hub um, is doing is it's taking proven technologies Mm -hmm. and helping them scale. And that's where we come in. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that we we will be a really good partner to really help these entrepreneurs build those go to market strategies and business models and test them with our network of contractors Mm -hmm. to really scale and be successful businesses. So I think we are very, very excited about this opportunity. Awesome. Before we finish up, I did want to like hone back in on you because I think taking that leap from just corporate to really focusing on sustainability is such a huge role and a huge role to take on really. And I really wanted to talk about like, personally to you, what would you say are the pros and cons 
of working on the corporate side of environmental impact as you're doing now versus the nonprofit side. So for instance, for myself, like I'm very familiar with the nonprofit side and I know a lot of other students and youth and young adults who nonprofits are really like what they think of when they think of like, how can we impact like climate action in such a specific way? But something that at Clio we tried to like let everyone know is that any space that you can work in can be like a climate driven space. So how would you like denote pros and cons of working in corporate green, gr corporate green, environmental work and nonprofits? Well, I would say that both lines of work are amazing, mm. right? Because of the impact that you can have, for sure. And they're both very necessary. They're very necessary, and they complement each other a lot. Mm -hmm. Especially, um, we do know that changes in policy have a huge, huge impact, and that mm -hmm. is extremely important. I also think that the private sector just has a huge role to play, mm -hmm. right? And industry has a huge role to play. So um, for me personally, how I think about it is um, anything that you can do within your role, be it, you know, in sustainability like I'm doing right now or um, in logistics at Watsco, for example, mm -hmm. all of the things that make a business better have a climate impact. Mm -hmm. Because that person in logistics that's thinking about routing optimization and discovers, you know, that they need 10 less trucks to deliver to make deliveries, that has a huge impact on emissions. Um, and I think that it's really important for people to understand that you can really make any job a climate job. Mm -hmm. Um, and I hope that that's something that really stays with anyone who's listening to this today. <laughs> Absolutely. But that's it for today's episode. House on Fire is powered by the Clio Institute and could not be made possible without the support of the Lynn and Lewis Wolfson II Family Foundation. Today's podcast is hosted by me, Dania Toledo, and is produced by Unicorn Fire Studios. The intro music is composed by the Microscopic Orchestra. If you love what we're doing here at House on Fire, be sure to leave us a five-star review on your favorite listening platform. It really helps us a lot. And if you're on YouTube, be sure to like, maybe leave a nice comment, and hit that notification bell so that you know when we drop a new episode. And until next time, House on Fire listeners and our lovely YouTube viewers, stay cool out there. And, you know, maybe look into getting a more efficient, like, HVAC unit. That might be helpful. Each year, the sea level rises, setting off irreversible chain reactions beyond human control. Ten hottest years ever measured. Climate change is our single greatest security threat. You are failing us. Governments know it. Even the United States military knows it. None of this is rhetoric, and none of it is hysteria. It is fact. House of Fire.